Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm sure you can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. Oh, that's much louder. Given the theme of today's service, which is back to school, and we're going to be blessing our children as they go back to their schools and their teachers as they go back, you might almost have answered, good morning, Mr. Hardcastle. <laughs> as children everywhere seem to do. Is that, Nathan, does that still happen? Where's Nathan gone? Nathan, does that still happen? I was saying... That's a great question to ask. I have no idea what the question is. Just ask it. I was saying, given that we're talking about back to school and, oh, yes. and so forth... You, their response to me might have been, good morning, Mr. Hardcastle. <laughs> do children yeah, still do that? In those tones. Do they still do that? They do. Yes. And I ask them to do it again, but with more energy. Okay. And then they go over the top. Okay. <laughs> well, we've just been taught what happens, so good morning, people. Good morning, Mr. Hardcastle. Oh, very good. We're setting the scene for the service. That's great. Welcome. Uh, it's lovely to, to be together. You know, I just uh, did the statistics for last year. I have to do a return to the, to the diocese about our numbers. Welcome to you on camera, because there are as many up there as there are here. The numbers for last year, the number of views online, was within one or two equal to the number of attendances on 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. So there are as many people typically out there watching as in you, as in here, in part of the service. So welcome to you who are watching. Uh, we do encourage you to come and be part of us physically. It's, uh, it's more engaging, it's more involved, but nonetheless welcome as you, uh, as you watch from there. Uh, a big welcome to Claire and Jasper. Claire and Jasper are back after a time away in Whangarei for a year away, wasn't it? Was it a year? Yep. So back here, and it's lovely to have you back. We're very excited and pleased about that, so welcome back and hope all goes well, and it's quite timely being back to school because there's a change of school there. In fact, a number of our children have got a change of school, and that's, I remember it was quite scary going to a new school, so some of you have already faced that and found it wasn't as bad as you thought it might be, um, and some of you may still be to face that, but we're going to be praying for you. So as we start, let's stand and sing our first song, Come As You Are. Rescue begin. 
Jesus said, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So as you promised to be with us, Lord Jesus, we welcome you here today. Help us, Lord, to worship you, to listen to your word, and to pray in faith that we may grow in our love for you and for one another. Amen. Would you be seated? We come seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to be and to do as members of Christ's body. In God there is forgiveness, loving and all-seeing God. Forgive us where we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us where we have failed to serve you and where our thoughts and actions have been contrary to yours, we ask your pardon. Amen. God forgives us. Be at peace. Rejoice and be glad. We shall all be one in Christ, one in our life together. Praise to God who has created us. Praise to God who has accepted us. Praise to God who sends us into the world. Now, there were three birthdays at the early service. I wonder if we have any amongst you for this week coming up, or maybe we've just missed some. Any hidden birthdays? No one willing to confess to a birthday? No? Okay. Well, let's uh, continue worshipping the Lord as we sing You Are Holy. Uh, apparently, this is one that we need to do a little bit of teaching and re-education on. Um, so the back-to-school theme is kind of continuing. The first part of this song, um, can you just switch to the next slide? The first part of this song is pretty easy because we can just split down the middle and you, know, you see the, the words are the same and what one half sings, the next half, you know, the other half sings and the echoes and it's the same tune and all is well and good with the world and we can just breathe easy. Um, but then, uh, if we can go to the next slide, thank you very much, uh, we have a slightly more complicated echo. So this is going to be a bit like school when you kind of learnt to sing in rounds and you know, it was anybody's guess how it was going to go. <laughs> but uh, what we'll just do is uh, Wendy and I will sing the first couple of lines of this and then we'll kind of just pause I'll sing the first couple lines of the chorus, take a break, see if it's kind of grabbed you, and if it hasn't, you can fake it anyway, and then <laughs> we will give it a good proper whirl, as they say. Sound like a plan? That was surprisingly affirming. Thank you for that. <laughs> You are mighty. You are mighty. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of praise. Worthy of praise. I will follow. I will follow. I will listen. Considerate of families, we're not going to do it again. We're going to keep pressing on. <laughs> Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God.
Mr. Fowler won't be teaching you, so it's, it's fairly safe. But I will be holding detention. Um, Wendy, I think you're leading us off at the stage, aren't you? You are. If you need the remote, if you need the mic to hand to people, it's there. If you do need to. All right, good morning, everyone. All right, so as the beginning of this school year, who has started school already? Raise your hand, please. There are about half of you, actually. And who is starting on Wednesday? I believe those are our two main options. Um, so what we want to do today is to take the opportunity to uh, discuss the start of the school year as a church family to pray for the pupils that we have amongst our midst and to pray for their teachers, their friends, and their learning for the year. Well, we will be asking that everyone sitting here, because we all have one thing in common, all of us have at one point in our lives gone to school. Is there anyone who does not fit that description? That was a gamble. Okay, I'm right, good. <laughs> it is possible. So I'd like you to think back about what school was like for you whenever it was, however long ago that was. And we're going to take the first prayer that we do today. You can use this as a way of teaching you to pray at the end of the day if you'd like to know how to pray a bit more, because some of us are always still learning that. Um, here's a few suggestions you could use at home. All of you on your tables, if you're sitting at a table, have a heart. Can you find this heart? And if you don't have a heart, either grab one from a table, or you can even just imagine it. Write it on something. It doesn't have to be a heart. OK, I think most of the writing has gone on. We would like to have a few minutes where you get to share and learn about each other at your tables. So starting from oldest to youngest today, could you please share at your table what the good thing was that you remember from school? Oldest to youngest, please. Friends. Friends. Oh, That's a pretty important one, isn't it? I wonder how many other people put friends. I know there's one on this table. Jasper, lots of people agree with you. Yep. Something from this table? Who would like to say? Rain, do you want to? What was your one? What was your one? Winning the cross country. Winning the cross country. Cross country. Wow. <laughs> Very good. What about over here? Making new friends. Making new friends, right? What about here? Who wants to say from this table? Oh, well, I remember 
remember music. Music, okay. <laughs> and there was a Friends here as well. Friends is a pretty important one, isn't it? And over here, is it going to be you or is it one of the, the older children? <laughs> Being with my friends. <laughs> friends is pretty important, isn't it? What have you got on yours? Cricket. Cricket, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got here? Um, I like the library. Library, mm. good. I was head librarian in my last year at school. What have you got? I love my teachers. Your teachers, well, that's, that's lovely. <laughs> what about we got over here? I enjoyed the drama. Drama, okay, <laughs> good. Drama good. <laughs> have I missed a table? I don't know. Have we got a, a, an impromptu table here? You want to say something? Okay, you just want to wipe your hand. Okay, what did you enjoy most at school? Um, friends. Friends. And maths. Okay. I enjoyed physics. <laughs> okay. I can say something, Ian. Okay, good. Oh, when the bell went to go home. <laughs> Okay. Well, so, it's good that there are things we can celebrate and enjoy about school. That was beautiful. So at the end of the day, it's a simple prayer of thanks. You don't need to ask God for anything. Just thank you, God, for whatever it is he just said. And there you go. All right. And the other prayer, a prayer of rest from our burdens. So I'd like someone, I think most of you have them, to pick up the big heavy backpack that is on your table, please. Okay, pick it up. At least one of you try it on. Preferably pass it around the table. See how heavy it is. <laughs> All right, I see some weary shoulders already. <laughs> So the backpack is a symbol of the heavy burdens that we carry, sometimes to school, sometimes in other lives. Um, and we remember the verse, Matthew eleven twenty eight. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Okay. So I'd like you um, to think at your table, not to write them down, but to just think at your table, what is a heavy burden that you carry sometimes at school? Take a few minutes, and then I'd like you to share that, um, possibly youngest to oldest this time, okay? Okay, I think you've all had a chance to share. So remember our verse, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So at the end of the day, we're saying, dear Jesus, please help me with the burden of tomorrow when I go to school, okay? All right. Okay, well, we're going to take a pause from that for a moment, and we're just going to talk a bit about Jesus as a boy, because Jesus had to learn as well. And um, we don't know very much about Jesus as a boy. We're not told very much, but there is one incident in his boyhood that we do hear about, which is in Luke chapter 2 starting at verse 40. So I'm just going to read that for us, and then we're going to see a video which explores that same story in quite an engaging way. Just to set the scene for you first. So just think about when you were uh, about 12 years old, if you were older than that, or think about how you might feel as if you were in the situation that you hear described. Every, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. <clears throat> After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. 
His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He said, Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in the favor of God and men. Right, we're going to see a video now with that uh, same story portrayed. Just you may need to adjust the volume on the laptop slider, Keith, as we get, Kevin, as we get there. So we'd like to play that for us. You alone, woman. my son. He's only twelve. He's <laughs> kids are nowhere. It's Jerusalem. You from here? No, we came for the Passover feast. We thought he was in the caravan. The feast was three days ago. Jesus! Jesus! Mary. <gasps> Ima. everywhere day and night we were so scared i told him he's okay why is everyone so upset mary he was in there you were supposed to be riding in the caravan with uncle abaita i was supposed to be with my father then why weren't you i was <sighs> you were in the temple it was incredible mary you should have seen him. He was teaching when I found him. The rabbis, the scribes, the scholars, they could not believe their ears. They barely let us leave. Didn't you know I must be in my father's house? It is too early for all this. If not now, when? Just help us get through all of this with you. Maybe we should get going before they make a formal inquiry. Hmm? Jesus, please don't do that again. Hmm? Yes, Abba. May I read? We'll see. Hmm? Come now, we've got a long journey. What are you going to do for your mother for this in transgression, huh? I'm going to make him rub your feet. Abba. <laughs> Some of you will recognize that's from the uh, series called The Chosen, which is a portrayal of the life of Christ. So, we don't know much about Jesus' childhood, but we hear about his birth at Christmas. His parents followed the Jewish customs for a, a newborn son. They had to flee then to Egypt for some time and they came back to Nazareth, but this is when he's a baby. We know Joseph was a carpenter and that the absolute norm was that a boy learnt his father's craft. By the way, carpenter is a little restrictive as a translation. It's sort of more like tradesman. Uh, this word, which is technon, from which we get technician, incidentally, um, would involve building with wood, building with stone, and some metal work as well. So a general builder, I guess. And there's nothing more about Jesus' childhood except this glimpse that we've heard, read today, and then portrayed in drama there. Now Luke says he interviewed witnesses in order to write his gospel. It seems pretty likely he interviewed Mary, because they're things like she treasured all these things in her heart. Who else would make that comment besides the woman herself? So what are we to understand from this? First of all, it says that the infant Jesus grew and became strong. He had to grow up like any other child. And we're told he was filled with wisdom and God's grace was on him. 
He would have learnt from his father, but he also went to school. Yes, they had school back then. And in school, he would have been taught to read and write. All Jewish children were taught to read and write. And he would be taught the five, first five books of the Old Testament, the Torah, and he'd have to memorise those off by heart. So I don't know if you do any memorisation nowadays in school. Us older ones had to learn bits of poetry off by heart, and probably the older, older ones, older than me, learnt more than I did, but I can still quote bits of Shakespeare that I had to learn, like um, a very useful quote, out damn spot, out I say, which is useful in all sorts of situations, like when a dog needs to go out, for example, but she was actually talking about blood on her hands. Or tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day till all our yesterdays have lighted falls the way to dusty death, etc. We had to memorise stuff. Jesus would have had to learn the first five books off by heart. Well, that's quite a lot. I mean, you know... <laughs> <laughs> if you think about that, that takes us through to Joshua. So we're talking about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's that much of the Bible. It's 212 pages in our Bibles here. And a, and a rabbi, and Jesus was a rabbi, would actually learn the entire Old Testament off by heart. So there was a lot of memorization, but he went to school. When he was 12, the family had gone to Jerusalem for the Passover meal, which is a big festival. You hear about it each year with us because it's where we get our uh, Easter from. And then they stayed. They would have stayed at least a week. And as you know from the story you've heard, the parents lost him. Has that ever happened in your family? Who's ever been lost as a child and couldn't find mummy or daddy? I have. Who's been a mummy or daddy and lost a child? Yeah. It's all a bit scary, isn't it? When my son was four years old, we were in Holland. Uh, we were about to catch a train to go to the airport, and I was asking someone on the platform, do I have to go to the ticket office to get a, a ticket, or can I get one on the train? And the train was about to go. It was the train before the one we were aiming for, actually. And I didn't realise it, but our son, who was four, had stepped on board the train while I was talking to this Dutch lady. And then I heard beep, 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 and the doors closed, and I looked down, and there was Jonathan inside the train by himself. And I was hammering on the door saying, stop the train, stop the train, and it, <laughs> it was an express train. First stop, Leiden, next stop, the airport destination, Amsterdam. My four-year-old is on a train to Amsterdam <laughs> by himself. <laughs> I won't tell you the whole story, it was very exciting. <laughs> but the station master managed to contact the driver of the train and arrange for Jonathan to be taken into the care of the guard, who delivered him to the station master at the next station, who kept him safe until we arrived. When we caught the next train, which was a stopping train, that means it stopped at every suburban station on the way, painfully crawled its way towards Leyden. When we arrived at Leyden, there was a station master in great coat, picked hat, holding a little boy by the hand, all very smart, very ordered, and we fell out of the train sobbing, oh, Jonathan, you're safe, you're safe. And he looked a bit surprised and said, why were you worried? I knew God would look after me. Collapse of parents who thought, yeah, we should have known that too, actually, shouldn't we? <laughs> it's actually a little bit like what happened when Mary and Joseph found Jesus. He said, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? That can also be translated, didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? And that's quite a significant thing. The Greek is actually, didn't you know I had to be doing my father's things? So business is a way of putting that. Do you know the significance of the fact he was 12? What happens when you're 12 if you're a Jewish boy? you have a bar mitzvah. And a bar mitzvah is a ceremony when you accept the law for yourself and you're regarded as a man. And at that point, he would be regarded as a partner in his father's business. So, whereas Joseph would be thinking, oh yes, he's going to be working with me in the woodshed, Jesus is going to be saying, I'll be working with Father God in the temple. And sure enough, he was discussing scripture with the teachers in the Bible, and they were amazed at his knowledge. 
Well, nonetheless, he went back to Nazareth with his parents and he was obedient to them. So children here, Jesus was obedient to his parents and we need to be obedient to our parents. Even Jesus, as the son of God, obeyed his earthly parents. And adults here, we still need to honour our parents if they're still alive and the memory of them. It's one of the Ten Commandments. It's the one that promises a blessing, that it may go well with you in the land. Finally, out of this reading, we hear that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in the favour of God and man. And then we hear nothing more of him until he's 30. But we see that even a perfect boy, a boy who'd never sinned, who did nothing wrong, had to do his schoolwork, he had to learn to obey, and he grew in wisdom. And if it was so for Jesus, it is certainly so for us. So now we're coming back to the third table activity. You've got just, just two more to go. And this one is about teachers and schools. Give us the next slide, if you will, Matthew. These are the schools in our area. They're quite a few, actually, aren't they? We've got um, Gulf Harbour, Wentworth Primary and Secondary, Whangaparoa, um, uh, Whangaparoa College, Stanmore Bay, Red Beach. We've got a Steiner Play Group up here. I'm not sure what that one is. Don't know if anyone knows that one. Kingsway Senior and Junior Campus, and I think there's, I'm not quite sure why there are two ones there. Alison, do you know what the other one is? No, okay. Stella Maris and Montessori Preschool there. So, I wonder what um, schools we've got represented here. I can start with, from 8 o'clock, we've got a teacher from Kai Copper Copper. College, Pukeko Preschool, or Early Learning. Well, that's not actually school, is it? Okay, we need to draw a line somewhere. Okay, so we've got quite a lot of schools represented in our midst, haven't we? So now the next thing is we're going to look at teachers, because we want to pray for teachers. Who would like to be a teacher? So, at your tables... Can you just have a little word with the others about who your teacher is if you're at school? And then we're going to write their names up here and then you can pray for them at your table. Pray for your own teacher at your table. Oh, yes, Nathan's here. There we are. Okay, so at your tables, would you pray especially for the teacher associated with the child at your table? But you might be generous and pray a little more widely, and particularly for these ones who don't have a child, Pukeko, Coast, and Kakopa Kopa. We don't have any children represented from those ones. And you've got the suggestion there, you can write, we've written the name on the board. Pray and thank God for that teacher. Ask God to help them to have energy and wisdom in their teaching. So, go to it as tables. Throw a die at your table. The child tells you who you're going to be praying for. And go for it. I think you may all have finished by now. Um, if not, you could perhaps continue that after the service. So let's finish this off by praying the Lord's Prayer together. As Christ teaches us, we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial Deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. Would you like to stand up, please? <clears throat> May the peace of Christ be always with you. Perhaps you'd like to go and greet people at your table and not too much further beyond that for time. <laughs> your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God, you made us and the world and everything in it. All the good we see comes from you. You have always loved us, but people have not always loved you. You sent Jesus to show us how to live and to bring us back to you again. He died for us on the cross so that through your spirit we can all be your people. And so with thanks we praise you saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We are here because on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took some bread and gave thanks. He broke it in pieces and gave it to them. This is my body, he said. Do this and know that I am with you. Later, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to you. He shared it with them and said, This is my blood which brings new life. Do this and know that I am with you. And so, remembering Jesus who died, was raised to new life by you and is alive forever, we're glad to share that life and live in him and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit so this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of Jesus. And through this food, give us strength to live as your people. Help us to care for your world and for each other in the way that Jesus showed us. Until he comes again with all your people in every time and every land, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. 
Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is risen from the dead. Come, God's people, come to receive Christ's heavenly food. Thank you that you have called us to your table and fed us with the bread of life. You alone bring growth to your church. Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to be seated? Now, at this point, we're having the blessing of the backpacks. So you were asked, families, to make sure that you brought a backpack or some other item representative of school for your child. And even Jasper's got one, which is pretty good, pretty, pretty organized. So if the child would like to hold that and the other people at the table, you're going to take part in a blessing on the backpack, which is figurative for, for the child. 
So if you can get your app card out. I guess if you haven't got one, Wendy might have some spare. Where's Wendy gone? Loving God, we pray that you bless this backpack and the student who carries it as they begin a new school year. Help them to discover and develop the gifts you've given them. Allow them to be the best student they can be, reaching out to others and setting good examples to all they meet. As these students carry their backpacks, may they be reminded of your love and care for them each school day. Give them confidence when they are anxious Comfort when they are afraid, and encouragement when they are tired. Amen. Okay, now children, I want to explain something special to you. We're going to give you a chance to ring the bell on the chapel. Now the old church, we call the chapel, has, which is over 100 years old, has got a bell. And that bell is used to call people to come to church. It's used to celebrate very special things. And sometimes it's used when someone's died, like when the Queen died, we rang uh, one toll for each year of her life at one minute intervals, so, so it took quite a while. So it's not just a play thing, it's quite a special thing, but we have the idea that you might like to go and ring the bell once for each number of the year you're going into. So if you're going into year three, you'd ring it three times. If you're going into year 12, you'd ring it 12 times. You go into year one, you bring it once. Okay? So that'll be straight after the service. I should just warn you, it's a little bit tricky. Because the bell has got a, a clapper inside it and they are both hanging, if you just sort of pull it, yank it, it goes clang, 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 clang. So I was watching the woman who did it at 8 o'clock today and she had a nice rhythm about every second she was pulling it. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. It won't matter if you're doing one. Someone like Lucas is going to have to get the nice even stroke. Otherwise, he'll be in year 24 or something by accident, which would be <laughs> quite embarrassing. Okay, so that's straight out of the service. Notices, um, just really telling you about stuff coming up. Matthew, give us the next slide, please. Okay, you've seen a bit about City to City in the kit sheet, I hope. Do read your kit sheet. It's got a lot of information coming up that you, we want you to know about. But City to City is an organization um, founded by Tim Keller, a Presbyterian in New York City, but spread around the world. Uh, we're working with an Australian branch of it. Uh, Tim Keller said, to reach more people with the gospel, we need a movement of men and women committed to planting new churches and revitalizing existing ones. We are taking part in that revitalizing bit. And um, what they're offering us is a tailored, research-based, revitalization roadmap for the church, backed by a bespoke training program as well as coaching and leadership development. In other words, they're going to come, they're going to look at us, help us see what we could do better, and then provide training to help us do that. And that's over a two-year period. They um, offer an intensive for one year, but they're extending it to two years for us and some other churches which are on a program together which I've been involved in organising for uh, churches in Auckland, along with Peter and Lorraine Lloyd. So next week, we'll be sending you out an email with a survey. I know you did a survey late last, late last year. I did warn you there would be two surveys. Um, this one will be more in-depth, and it's more tailored to us rather than the general national one we did last year. And out of that and various other data collection uh, activities, they'll make recommendations to Vestry, which we then choose what we want to do. They're not imposing on us, they're helping us uh, have an outsiders look at us and say, we think it would help you if you did this or did that. So I'm really excited about it. I think it's a great opportunity. Normally it would cost us $15,000. We're getting it for $2,000 spread over two years because of a donor who's making a big subsidy available for us to, to be part of it. So we're blessed and we want to make good use of it. So watch out for that coming. Those of you who do email and online, that's a preferred method, but there will be paper copies for those who would rather do it on paper. That'll be next week. Uh, the other thing is to say that we had an appeal for help for Condara Diocese because they had flooding last year, you may remember in November, totally unseasonal. They never have rain in November and they had floods. And that wiped out some food stocks 
and they were already hungry. So we sent over $1,700 uh, Two other churches, Rangiora Church and one in America sent some money and you'll see there's a report in the kit sheet about how they were able to feed uh, almost a thousand people for three weeks out of the funds that we sent. So thank you for sending and there's a thank you to you from Bishop Given in the kit sheet. All right, now as the final part, apart from the bell ringing, of Back to School Sunday, we've got a blessing which is going to be done by our singing it over ourselves, the blessing from number six, where the Lord uh, said, if you play, pray over the people of this blessing, I will bless them. Let's stand and sing. If you've been coming here for a while, you'll have seen that Ian often use, uses a version of this to, to bless the kids when they come up for communion. Uh, a lot of us as parents will probably have said this over our kids while they sleep and they'll have no idea how creepy it is. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of a, a song where if you don't have somebody in mind as you sing it, it's just kind of rattling off some words of what becomes a fairly repetitive melody later on. So. That's how I'd suggest you, you kind of approach this. Make his 
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.